what's happening in YouTube. So, thankfully, 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 the Clippers won a another game again. Like, we had two really rough stretches, but thankfully for this game, we actually managed to pull it off. Um, it was fairly sloppy, but in the fourth quarter, that's when things got pretty exciting, and it was actually, like, a really fun game. Like, basically, the last minute, it was a really, like, intense game. Thankfully, the Clippers managed to pull it off, but it was fairly rough, especially against, like, a team like the Washington Wizards, which is a really beatable team, especially when they did not have Bradley Beal. So, um, pretty much gonna go player by player, like I usually do. So, first of all, Reggie Big Government Jackson. Reggie, he stepped up big time, um, despite him, you know, having two really rough games against the Warriors and the Knicks, Reggie Jackson was absolutely killing it. He was definitely back to his former self, swishing threes, making all types of really nice crafty layups. He even played pretty good defense, defense as well, too. He got a really nice block. Um, he was targeting for Zingas, just like getting a basket on him. He was just amazing. And Glad that that um this is like the first night when the Clippers thingy like um they hand like a um a Reggie P B and J bites to the fans, so that's pretty good. Um speaking of that, just check my previous video um if you wanna know if you wanna have an idea what the Reggie P B and J bites taste or look like because I did like a little food review earlier, and hey, those slap. Those slap pretty good. Those are nice and crunchy, crispy. Has pretty good flavor. It's kind of like a, like, it's either like a pretzel or it's kind of like a cereal. Like honestly, more like a cereal. Like, I really like would love like the Clippers to like you know sell like the Reggie bites, but like in a five pound bag or a ten pound bag. And then, you know, you can use those to make, like, just to have cereal, because those are pretty good. Like, if we're being for real, for real. But, yeah, um, that was, like, a really big side note. But, Reggie, big shout out to you, man. And one thing that I, like, love about Reggie is he always had the heart. Like, after when the Clippers went out against, went out against you know, a really rough game, Rough series against the Suns. Red Jackson was in all tears. He was like, you know, like in a really, really, really like, you know, rough moment that, you know, his team, like that the Clippers cannot pull it off. And when you have someone like Red Jackson, you just have to respect that because that's some type of warrior mentality to have. And right. And Reggie, he definitely has that. And that's a huge plus for Reggie. But now going to go to another player. Muck Morris. Now, Muck was, you know, another player that, you know, kind of struggled in the past two games, especially the one against the Knicks. But he did struggle big against the Warriors, but he did somewhat, like, decent. Not, like, the worst in the world, but, you know, he was not the particularly the best. But this time, he went 10 for 15. He was doing he was doing his job. He was, you know, getting up in this in the paint, he does his post fade away and makes him, um, his mid-range game was pretty good, um, defense was fairly better, um, basically did his thing, just made some threes, and, yeah, Muck was pretty nice, pretty nice, 10 for 15, I believe, about, like, 20-something points, if I can recall, or, yeah, something like that, and then, big Zook, Zubuck, he was, um, he was in the middle. Um, he was a lot more reliable compared to the past two games. Like, um, he made some, some shots, 
made some free throws, got some rebounds, but he made like a decent amount of like bo- boneheaded, like boneheaded or like you know blunders or something like that because he did like miss a fairly easy layup, which is that was a huge negative for Zubac because like. Well, yeah, like, especially, like, you're a seven-footer, like, it, it should not, like, you know, you should not really, like, you know, uh, miss that necessarily, but I guess it happens to everybody. I mean, I'm sure, like, I know, I skunked a lot of uh, close-range layups and all of that, but, you know, it happens, but, yeah, Zubak could, Zubak has, like, some swing factors, like I said in the past, like, that's one thing Zubak could definitely try to work on is like consistency and his they can, the swing factors of Zubak is you know like um how could I like properly phrase it like he's like the type of guy that you know it's like a little more easier to take the ball out of his hand or something like that but I mean Zubak like he does he gets jobs done um he did you know have some really good flashes so but but yeah like. Zubak could definitely also work on consistency as well, too, but Zubak was not too bad, but, you know, he he did make some mistakes, but he wasn't the worst. He went for 5 for 13, which is, that's fairly solid, um, if you want to say how good Zubak did. And the man, Nick Batum. Nick Batum, like, I know stat sheets does not look beautiful, but... But when you actually saw saw the game, but Tim was pretty solid. He, he was actually pretty good. He played pretty good defense, um, knocking things down, um, just doing things all around, which is that's what we love about Nick Batum, and he continues to keep doing that. And a really interesting one was Amir Coffey was starting. And Amir Coffey, I thought he did pretty solid despite of his field goal percentage, because he actually played pretty good defense, especially on Chris Tapp Porzingis during crunch time. Like, Porzingis, he he, he managed to miss the the mid-range, could not really post out with Amir Coffey, because, you know, a pretty soft... Because Amir Coffey, he's, like, decently big. I, I wouldn't say he's long, but he is kind of big, and... And which is, you know, resolving him, you know, managed to hold his own against um, a guy like Chris at Porzingis. And then you got Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard, who both of them absolutely killed it. Luke Kennard was just, he was just an ultimate sniper. Once again, he was new Kennard. He was dropping all the bombs. Just pure butter, pure butter. Um, Terrence Mann, he was bringing all that tremendous grit. He was bringing that hustle. He was doing literally everything. And he was really good on the offensive end as well, too, which is, that's what we love about the man Terrence Mann. Harnstein, um, he did pretty solid. Got some magic, get some buckets. Um, you know, also played some pretty solid defense. But that's pretty much it. Like, we pretty much ran an eight-man rotation, which is, if I'm going to be brutally honest, I'm not, like, the biggest fan of it because the man, Brandon Boston Jr., he was getting no minutes. And, like, let's be honest, like, I know we won the game, but, like, like you're putting, like, a lot of loads on all these players. And a guy like Brandon Boston Jr., who has tremendous talent, like, who's, who is, like, you know, really versatile, who's, like, six foot seven. Six foot seven. Um, he has a seven foot wingspan. Basically, um, he has a really smooth, so smooth type of vibe in him. Like he's really like nice with the midi, and you know he could knock out, knock, knock down occasional threes. Yes, I get he's streaky, but you know, on the defensive end, he was he's pretty good as well too. Like I'm really like. If I'm being honest, I'm not a big fan on, you know, how Brandon Boston Jr. was not getting any minutes. Like, I, yeah, I know we won the game, but come on, man. You do not want to waste young talent, especially a guy with Brandon Boston. That's what 
that's one thing I kind of got a little disappointed with Tyron Lue lately is he's not really utilizing Brandon Boston Jr. like how I would want to see it because we all know what Brandon Boston Jr. is capable of. And we all know Tyron Lue, he's a pretty solid coach. He's actually a great coach considering, you know, how the club has been doing. But that's Tyron Lue's, like, big flaw is, like, you know, he just needs to utilize a guy like Brandon Boston Jr. more. Like, he's the one that brings in that juice. He's the one that brings that energy because, like, the first three quarters, the club's energy was, you know, it was solid, but, you know, you, it definitely could have used some juice. And Brandon Boston Jr., he was that juice. He was that that and the ultimate fuel to the engine. And he, unfortunately, he sat on the bench, which is... I did not really, really, you know, not a big fan of it. Like, like, um, like Brandon Boston, he was, you know, he was being, like, a great teammate as well, too. He was, you know, cheering on and everything. But that man, Brandon Boston, Boston Jr., he should be celebrating as well, too. He should be, like, he should be, like, doing that. He should be on the court rather than just, you know, um, uh, like, you know, forced to sit on the bench, like, because we all know Brandon Boston Jr., he's a killer, and he's not getting minutes, which is, I'm not a fan of, to be honest, if I had to be brutally honest, but, but yeah, we won the game, so, you know, so, I guess that's that, but that's one thing Tyron Lue needs to take in considerations down the stretch, because, one, you don't want to an overload of of the vets. Two, you don't want to waste young talent. Honestly, that's a one. But but yeah. But now let's talk about the Washington Wizards a bit. Um, they played pretty solid all around. Um, KCP, he was not you know the best in the first three quarter, but in the fourth quarter he was actually pretty clutch. He made some really timely shots that almost beat my Clippers, but. But yeah, he had some pretty t- timely shots, clutch shots, and all that. And you got Kyle Kuzma, who who was one for four, but but did somewhat fairly solid. He had like 16 points, 17 points. I forgot, but but yeah, Kyle Kuzma, like believe it or not, he's actually high, pretty solid for the Wizards, and it was a really good. Fresh start from, you know, the toxic Lakers environment. And then you got, um, Kristaps Porzingis, who was a really interesting addition for the Wizards. Like, they actually got, like, a true, like, a true, well, I don't know if I want to say true, but, you know, true center. But, in Kristaps Porzingis sent for three, um, he took a lot of outside shots, like how he did against us, like, he wouldn't like really post up and all and all that. He would rather you know take all the shots. And I love that beautiful play when Amir Coffey played really good defense on Chris Porzingis and Chris Porzingis managed to miss it. So, shout big shots to Amir Coffey. But but yeah, like um, Porzingis like like from what I seen, he kind of plays a little more like a shooting guard rather than. A center because like you know he would just rather take them threes or them minis and you know not post up like you know two 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 often which is that's pretty good for my Clippers and they got Neto who played solid um who else Hachimura pretty promising piece for the Wizards did pretty good seven for ten um did his thing. Uh, yeah, and then, but yeah, that's pretty much what I can pretty much say about the Washington Wizards. It was a really good game. Shout out to the Wizards, though. Like, it was actually a pretty fun game to see, but, but glad my Clippers pulled us off, and we got a pretty good dub, so hopefully, down the line, we can start winning. I don't know who we play next. I'll check it out. I'll find out later, but. I really wish we could have played like this against the Golden State Warriors because it would have been so beautiful if we could be like an elite team like the Warriors. But it is what it is. We managed to win against the Wizards, so 
I guess I'll take the dub. So, just let me know what you think about this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be sure to talk with y'all in the comment section. And as y'all know, have a great night.